everybody. Good afternoon, uh, my viewers. Uh, we are going to start our program today's webinar, virtual workshop with the scientist. As since law since last uh, few days, we are going through the virtual workshop with the scientist of Central Council of Research in Homeopathy. On 2nd October, that was inaugurated by the DG Central Council of Research in Homeopathy uh, on the occasion of Gandhi's birthday. Now, this is another day. We have two renowned speakers, uh, very brilliant students in their student life. And now they are research officer, scientist of Central Council of Research in Homeopathy Government of India. Uh, the first speaker will be Dr. Omit Sivasta from in Paul, from Impal, too far from Nagpur. I am at Nagpur. Omit is from Impal, and Bresmika is from Chennai. And uh, we are <laughs> connecting the three part of the country: South, North, and <laughs> this is Central. Yeah. Uh, Bresmika is the principal host because Bahola Research Foundation, and uh, she is from Chennai. So, my beloved students and viewers, we would like to start our program with Dr. Omit Sivastava. Uh, importance of evidence generation in homeopathy. Yes, uh, it is uh, very essential for us because always you are claiming we have a lot of scope uh, with homeopathy to treat the different complicated diseases and different diseases. But uh, what uh, is required is evidence is required. Always the modern medicine and the scientific platforms are asking us uh, you keep your evidence, evidence based. You should be evidence based, evidence based, based. So I request Dr. Omit to start his program with his topic. If you need his skin sharing, there is a provision of skin sharing. Okay, okay now okay. live program is going on. So anybody can observe through the watch through the live telecast. I love page homeopathy, YouTube also. Thank you, Omit. Please start your program. Thank you very much, sir. So, uh, first of all, I will like to share my screen. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, is it visible? Uh, yes, visible. Stop. Visible. Oh, Sivas, Pizar, Chopi, oh, Chahar, oh, visible. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, I will like to express my gratitude uh, uh, to Antar Bharati Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital and also to uh, Bahula, Bahula Foundation for giving me an opportunity today to present the, my session in this webinar. So uh, I have divided, today's my topic is importance of evidence generation in homeopathy. I have divided my presentation in two parts. The first part will focus on introduction to research, to evidence-based medicine and why it is essential to conduct evidence-based research in homeopathy. And the second part will focus on certain tools which the clinicians may use in his, in his or her uh, OPD, in his uh, daily practice to generate evidence in support of homeopathy. So I, I start. Uh, first of all, what is research? Research is a quest for knowledge through diligent search or investigation or experimentation aimed at the discovery and interpretation of new knowledge. So whenever we conduct a, a research, uh, this process changes information into knowledge through critical, critical assessment and relating it to other existing human knowledge. And uh, health research can also be defined as the process for systematic collection, description, analysis, and interpretation of data that can be used to improve the health of individuals or group. Uh, broadly, the research can be classed, can be categorized into two broad categories, observation studies and experimental studies. Uh, observation study may either be descriptive or analytical. Descriptive study uh, describes the distribution of a characteristics, while the analytical study describes the association and analyzes them for possible cause and effect. Again, the observation study may either be cross-sectional or longitudinal. Cross-sectional study, the measurements are made on a single occasion, while the longitudinal study, the measurements are made over a period of time. Uh, some examples of uh, descriptive studies can be case series, uh, diagnosis, or uh, epidemiological description of disease occurrence or community surveys. And uh, the examples of analytical studies can be uh, case control studies, the prospective cohort and the retrospective cohort studies, and also the analytical cross-sectional studies. And the second type are the experimental studies. 
uh, in the experimental studies, uh, the investigators uh, test the effect of an intervention on the events which take place in the studies. For example, uh, we, we, we need to test the effect of certain homeopathic medicine in certain disease conditions. Uh, an experimental study may either be controlled or non-controlled. And again, the controlled experimental study may either be randomized or non-randomized. So th this was a uh, broad category. Uh, now, evidence-based research in medicine as conceived by Cochrane is a research movement in the medical science based upon the application of the scientific method. Uh, it seeks the conscientious explicit and judicial identification, evaluation, and use of best evidence which, has, which are correctly avail available with us. Uh, there are three, the evidence is medicine is a concept which relies on three pillars. These are the three pillars. The first is the individual clinical expertise. Second is the values and desires of the patient. And the third is the current best evidence. No, the Lancet is a, uh, it is a prestigious medical journal. It has stated that uh, science has taken a turn to one towards darkness by obsession for pursuing fashionable trends of dubious importance. Uh, it, is also, uh, it also wrote that uh, much of the scientific literature, uh, perhaps half, may simply be untrue. And the reason they have stated that uh, the studies are with small sample size, tiny effects, invalid exploratory analysis, and uh, also due to some flagrant conflicts of interest. So it is important that whenever we are uh, we, we practicing this method, uh, we must follow the, these next four steps. Uh, the first step is the formulation of an answer, answerable question. Uh, what uh, in, in our study, uh, and this uh, question should be formulated on, on the base of P, P for model. P, P is for participants. Uh, what will, who will be the participants in the study? I, I stands for intervention. What will be the intervention? And if there is any comparison used in the study, or uh, and what is the outcome of interest? So we have to formulate a research question in advance. Then we have to find the best evidence. Uh, the evidence uh, uh, is uh, on, on uh, is according to the level of evidence, which provide guidance about the types of evidence more likely to prove trustworthy answer, provide trustworthy answers to clinical question. And after conducting the study, we have to see to critically appraise the evidence which we got from the study. We have to see whether the results of the study are valid or not. What are the results which were obtained, and will this result which was obtained from the study help me locally or not? And finally, applying this evidence to the treatment of patients. Now, the ultimate aim of the practicing evidence-based medicine is to integrate current best evidence from research with clinical expertise and the patient's features and values. So we have to see whether my patients are similar to those in the study which, which was conducted, and whether that intervention is realistic in my setting or not and have all the important outcomes been considered. So these are the basic uh, steps which has to be kept in mind while practicing evidence-based medicine. So, uh, the objectives of the research. The objectives are the, uh, one of the objectives is to gain familiarity with, with the phenomena, which comes under the domain of exploratory research. The other is to portray characteristics of individual or, of group, individual or group, which is uh, which comes under descriptive research, to determine the frequency which is something occur we do under diagnostic research and to test a hypothesis of causal relationship or which we do under hypothesis testing. So these are the broad objectives. And beside these objectives, in addition to these, there may be also a number of other objectives which are specific to homeopathy, such as validating its theoretical framework and comparison with the conventional system. Now, the WHO traditional medicine strategy 2014 and 23 document also endorses the clinical education and research in the complementary and alternative medicine, including homeopathy, to ensure safety, efficacy, and quality of traditional medicine. So the overall aim, our overall aim should be to add uh, more evidence to the existing pool by uh, systematic reviews, randomized control trials, observational study, and also high quality case reports. Uh, as we know that uh, homeopathy is gaining popularity by each passing year, uh, it is well known that it is officially recognized by the government as a system of medicine in Central or South America, Asia, and also Europe. In some of these countries like uh, Brazil, India, Mexico, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, homeopathy has been integrated into, into national healthcare system. And in India, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka, the legal standing is equal to that of the conventional system of medicine. And it is estimated that uh, there are more than 200 million users of homeopathy worldwide. And in India, uh, the mod, uh, India followed a, uh, a cafeteria style ap ap approach uh, for integrated medicine, where provision for people's choice of healthcare is available. Uh, in India, an independent ministry of Ayush has been created to provide support and supervision 
Central Council for Research in Homeopathy (CCRH) has been established as an autonomous research council to undertake uh, organized research in the field of homeopathy. And also, Central Council of Homeopathy was established to regulate homeopathic medical education and also registration of uh, homeopathic practitioners. So we see that equal uh, status has been granted to the Ayush physicians. And uh, in India, there are around uh, uh, 221 undergraduate and 50 postgraduate homeopathy college with annual intake of more than 13,000 students in these colleges. And uh, healthcare services in homeopathy are uh, provided by as many as 32 hospitals run by state government and central government. More than 7,000 dispensaries run by the government and municipal bodies, which includes th those run by central CGHS, by the labor ministry and the railway ministry. So you see that the homeopathy has gained popularity in, in these years. And uh, overall, uh, there are around 3, 3 lakh registered homeopathic medical practitioners in India, which constitutes around 37% of the total number of Ayush practitioners. So uh, along uh, with the gaining popularity, also there has been some research also uh, done and evidence has been uh, generated in favor of homeopathy. So there's increasing pool of evidence for the scientific and plausible understanding of the mechanism of homeopathic medicine. Means so there have been uh, several clinical trials have been published in index journals showing effectiveness of homeopathy. Some uh, met systematic reviews has been conducted and meta-analysis uh, meta systematic reviews has been conducted. And studies have revealed that uh, homeopathic remedies contain nanoparticle of source materials. Uh, they act by stimulating hormetic adaptive systems. Uh, even Nobel laureates are talking about the electromagnetic signals and quantum theory with respect to homeopathy. So we have seen that uh, homeopathic is gaining popularity and the evidence is also being generated. But still, uh, in, in, uh, in spite of that, I would like to make a statement here. And uh, for, according to me, this is a very important statement that uh, all health professionals, especially homeopathic physicians, should do some research or at least get enough knowledge about the research process, even if they wish to spend the rest of their lives relieving patients or health administration. Now, why I am stating that uh, it has to be viewed in the context of the recent criticism of homeopathy by the skeptics. There have been many attacks of, uh, on homeopathy in the past, uh, uh, of which I am uh, enumerating only three to four, four here. Uh, first one was a uh, meta-analysis conducted by Linde et al. published in Lancet in 1997. Uh, in this meta-analysis, uh, uh, it, uh, it included 186 placebo-controlled trials uh, studies of homeopathy and uh, odds ratio was in favor of homeopathy. And it stated that clinical effects of homeopathy are not completely due to placebo, but there is insufficient evidence that uh, any single uh, type of homeopathy treatment is clearly effective in any one clinical condition. So this uh, the result was not uh, totally against homeopathy, it was slightly in favor of homeopathy. But the second meta-analysis, which was done by Shang et al. in 2005, again published in the Lancet Journal, uh, this meta-analysis compared 110 placebo controlled trials of homeopathy with 110 matched trials of conventional medicine. But the final conclusion was based only on selection of eight trials. And these eight large trials of homeopathy with higher quality shows no convincing evidence that homeopathy was superior to placebo. So, and this, but uh, this meta-analysis was uh, criticized heavily due to lack of transparency. Uh, in 2009, BBC telecasted the news that homeopathy is not a cure uh, according to WHO. And uh, one of the most talked about is the NHMRC report, famously known as Australia report. Uh, it concluded that there is, are no health conditions for which there is reliable evidence that homeopathy is effective. Uh, there was a, a, a movement against this uh, uh, this report all over the world, and it was the, this, the, the committee was forced to release its, uh, its earlier report also. So these are some of the criticism which the which homeopathy has been facing for last two decades for certain decades. So we have seen that the homeopathy is growing in popularity, and there are also many attacks on homeopathy. Uh, so with growing popularity comes the necessity to build upon the scientific evidence of homeopathy. Homeopathy still continues to face criticism for its plausibility, safety, and efficacy. And what are the reasons? The reasons could be that uh, reluctance of many practitioners to engage in evidence-based practice lack of appropriate training to conduct high quality research. Uh, there are, uh, means uh, the, the clinicians do not have enough, enough research experience. Uh, there is limitation in interpreting the results accurately and uh, there is lack of knowledge for research methodologies. More webinars are needed to be uh, uh, to be conducted on, on, research, on, on this research methodology topic to sensitize the clinicians. Uh, inadequate or poor funding for researchers and uh, poor access to high quality systematic reviews and also qualitative studies. And also there is a lack of uh, homeopathic journals in the mainstream database also. 
so there is very few opportunity for research education. And apart from that, there is, there is uh, uh, I think that there is also bias is an important barrier because there is an innate negative perception about homeopathy. And another significant barrier, which uh, I found that uh, is due to complexities of homeopathy because uh, it's an individualized medicine. So the individualistic nature, the homeopathic principles and philosophy, nature of treatment, these are not completely reflected in the conventional research framework. Thus, it is difficult to capture the true effect of homeopathy. But these criticisms can only be answered by evidence-based research. So evidence-based research in homeopathy, the homeopathic practitioners should have enough knowledge about intricacies of homeopathic research to search for their own scientific identity. So, so I am again stating here that each and every homeopathic practitioner should have some knowledge of the research, even if they uh, even if they, can, uh, they wish to continue, uh, in, uh, continue in either administration or clinical practice. So uh, <laughs> homeopathy can offer new dimensions to evidence-based medicine because the data-driven method and persistence. Uh, there are still increasing calls for evidence-based medicine, but uh, the pertinent question here is ki, what actually constitutes evidence? Uh, what, what evidence uh, we are talking about? So for this, an answer can be obtained from the, from the level of evidence, which was given by Center for Evidence-Based Medicine. Here, uh, on, the, on the topmost uh, level are the systematic reviews of RCTs, the individual RCT, all or none study. On the second level comes the systematic review of cohort studies, the individual cohort and the outcome research. On the third level, systematic reviews and individual case control study. On the, the, these top three levels, level one, level two, level three, these, type, these studies can be conducted by the research organization or the research bodies, uh, and, and but not, uh, but very difficult, not feasible for the individuals. For the individuals, uh, for individual clinicians, the level four and level five uh, are feasible, like case series and expert opinion, and case reports also come under this category. So uh, I'm just uh, uh, highlighting on the RCTs uh, because it is relevant to the next uh, you know that homeopathy has been more severely tested through double blind RCTs than any other therapeutic modality. So if we check on balance, uh, the number of trials which has been performed seems to favor homeopathy, but still the skeptics remain unconvinced and uh, repeatedly call for more definitive trials that prove that homeopathy is no better than placebo. So the problem is that homeopathy still faces the challenge of generating sufficient level one evidence for meta-analysis of RCTs in particular disease conditions. So, so we know that uh, randomized control trials are generally considered as gold standard for establishing how well an intervention works and uh, also for their ability to reduce bias and confounding factors that would otherwise influence both group and assignment and prognosis. Now, uh, the RCTs, uh, are uh, class, uh, broadly categorized into explanatory and pragmatic trials, which are the two ends of a continuum. In the explanatory trials, uh, the, the explanatory trial assess the research hypothesis under ideal study circumstances, means under controlled environment. And these studies have a strong internal validity. Means uh, we can depend on the results of these given trials, but these trials uh, may have very limited external val validity. Means we may not be able to apply the results to the routine clinical practice where patients are usually comorbid uh, and with varied level of severity. Because these are under the patients under usual circumstances. And on the other end of the uh, continuum are the pragmatic trials, which seek to know if the particular intervention works under usual conditions. And these type of studies have high general, generalizability or external value. Now, why I have stressed on this point? Uh, because uh, uh, the homeopathic trials have been broadly criti criticized for uh, their lack of acceptable model validity. So a new a new tools for assessing the model validity of RCTs of homeopathy are available in the form of model validity of homeopathic treatment. Uh, it consists of six domains. And uh, before designing or undertaking any study, these domains must be taken into consideration. If uh, we want, if any organization, individual wants to undertake a study, this model validity of homeopathic RCTs must be taken into consideration. So the six domains are the first is the rational, I mean, would a significant uh, body of accredited homeopaths support the rational for the intervention used in the study? Second is the principles. Is the specific intervention used consistent with the homeopathic principles or not? Third is the practitioner. Means, means the does the study have suitably qualified and experienced homeopathic practitioner input? Fourth is the outcome measure. Means does the main outcome measure reflect the main effect expected of the intervention used? 
fifth is the sensitivity. I mean, the, is the main outcome measure capable of detecting change or not? And domain six is the follow-up, means the, the length of the follow-up for, for, for the main outcome measure is appropriate to detect the intended effect or not. So this model validity of homeopathic RCT has to be taken into consideration. Now I move on to the second part of the of my presentation about the tools which uh, which the clinicians can use in their daily practice and also in, in the if they undertake any research to strengthen their evidence base. So uh, evidences are objective evidence and subjective evidence. And objective evidence everyone knew and, and how to collect them. Objective evidence are findings that reflect expert external observation of any measurement of the patient. It includes uh, lab text, x-ray reports, healthcare provider examination or observation, other similar data as proposed by the HPUS clinical data working group. And But uh, the scientific community is placing more and more importance on subjective evidence nowadays. And subjective evidence both from the uh, viewpoint of the patient and also from the viewpoint of the physician. So this has to be gathered through patient reports, uh, like structured questionnaires and the opinion asking if the symptoms have improved or not. So. Uh, in, in, in the later half, in the in the next part, I am uh, focusing on the subjective evidence because objective evidence. Uh, each clinician is in the habit of uh, uh, of uh, taking the objective evidence, but uh, my my uh, focus will be on subjective evidence from here on. So, uh, the, the the foremost is the visual as analog scale, or uh, or a, a VAS. VAS is a measurement instrument that tries to measure. Test for attitude to range across a continuum of values, and is and it is very difficult to measure. Uh, it consists of a line of 10 centimeter long with verbal anchors at either end. For example, no pain on the far left and the most intense pain imaginable on the far right. So we ask the patient to place a mark uh, at a point on the line corresponding to the patient's rating of pain intensity on the first visit. And now, uh, whenever the patient comes on the follow-up, so on each subsequent visit, uh, we show his, the, we show the patient his previous VAS score, and again ask to mark a point on the line corresponding to the intensity on that present day. So uh, the VAS has been often recommended as a measure of choice for assessment of pain intensity and also in other disease conditions also. So uh, we can use a visual analog scale in our practice, and the second is the measure yourself medical outcome profile two score. Uh, in in a previous webinar, Dr. Rosa, uh, scientist too from CCRH, also uh, stressed on on this uh, scale. So uh, it, it has two forms: one at the baseline and and, and the other at the other at the follow. Uh, and we see that there are symptom one, symptom two, the activity score, and the general well-being score. So uh, the, what we do that the doctor asks each patient to list his or her two most bothersome symptoms, the most troublesome symptoms. And we ask the patient to rate on a seven point numerical rating scale from zero to six. Zero means is as good as it could be and six means as bad as it could be. And uh, for symptom one and symptom two, and apart from these symptoms, also the MIMOP2 also identifies patient experience of the effect of his or her problem on the chosen activity. Now this activity can, uh, can either be physical activity, social activity or mental activity. And also, the feeling of the general well-being. It is again rated on a seven-point numerical rating scale. Uh, I would like to state here that the symptom one and symptom two must be interrelated to each other, and uh, and apart from that, some other informations are also uh, captured, like uh, the duration of the symptoms, whether any other medication are being taken or not, and how uh, is for, for the patient to cut down this medication or not. So, to, so patients are asked to rate these symptoms at. At the patients are asked to rate these symptoms at uh, baseline visit and, and then at every subsequent visit. And the main outcome measure is the MIMOP2 profile score, which is the arithmetic mean of the reported subscore. Means we have to find the arithmetic me mean of the of the four the symptom one, symptom two, activity score, and the well-being score. And one most important thing is that MIMOP2 form should be laid out exactly as given with no change in wording. Means uh, if means at, at the baseline, if the, if the patient is, is has written on, on symptom one that uh, he, he has he or she has a pain epigastrium, then on on, on the follow up visit he has to mention the same symptom on on symptom one as pain epigastrium. He, he or she cannot write that pain in abdomen. So the wording has to be exactly same as the as the first visit. So this is the the form. This is the follow up MIMOP2 form again. Symptom one, symptom two, activity score and well being score. And apart from that, a symptom three score is also there if any additional symptoms develop. Uh, one more thing that this MIMOP2 score is uh, uh, for one individual uh, uh, complaint. 
and uh, for, for, for one individual system, uh, patients are, are suffering from multiple organ uh, symptoms pertaining to mul multiple organs, then multiple MIMO2 forms are, have to be used. But uh, we have to identify the two most troublesome symptoms, and this is the patient reported support, not the physician. The patient has to be has to report uh, this this form. Uh, it hardly takes uh, one or two minutes, and we are also. Uh, uh, utilizing this in our daily practice in our in our OPD at, at, at the institute, uh, all the chronic patients which are coming to our OPD, our doctors are uh, filling th this form for everyone. And the second and another is the uh, outcome related to impact on daily daily living over ideal scale. Uh, we we uh, we ask the patient ki what has been the overall effect of treatment on your main complaint or or your on the general well-being. Means uh, this tool can be tune for the context. We can use this uh, 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 scale for the main complaint also and also for the well-being. Uh, if the patient says that there is uh, no change, the same or unsure, we record zero. And if the patient says that he's better or worse, then we record their perceived degree of improvement or deterioration based on the numerical scale, like slight improvement or slight deterioration and with no effect on daily living, it's plus one or minus one. Moderate improvement and moderate deterioration with effect on daily living, it's plus two and minus two. If there is major improvement, it's plus three. If it's major deterioration, it's minus three. And if the patient is cured and back to normal, it's plus four. And if it is disaster, disaster deterioration, it's minus four. So this is a, but uh, one difference between the MIMO2 and ORDL scale is that MIMO2 is uh, comparable at baseline, while uh, ORDL is not comparable at baseline. Means ORDL is first filled at the follow-up visit and not at the baseline visit. So. Uh, the outcomes obtained using the Glasgow Homeopathic Hospital Outcome Scale, the GHH GHH OS scale, it was renamed as ORD scale. It was found to be significantly correlated with the Euro quality of life transition scale, the MIMOP, and the patient enabled instrument. It is a valid and sensitive tool for measuring changes in relation to impact on life. So apart from these two, another is a modified Naranjo criteria. The Naranjo algorithm was developed for, est for estimating the probability of adverse drug reaction. Now, this algorithm has been modified in 2014 by the clinical data working group of the HPUS for purpose of assigning causal attribution. Means up to what extent application of homeopathic medicine can be regard regarded as the cause for the changes occurred in the patient. Means whether the effect or, or the, the patient is showing is due to our homeopathic medicine or, or something else. So these, this, uh, this is, these are the questions in the modified Naranjo criteria. Uh, first is, was there, was there an improvement in the main condition? For which the medicine was prescribed. If he says yes, we score plus two. If no, then minus minus one. Did the clinical improvement occur within the plausible time frame? Third is was there the initial aggravation of symptoms? Not the the homeopathic aggravation, not the disease or medicinal aggravation. And number four is did the effect encompass more than more than the main symptom or conditions? Means the other symptoms were improved or not? Five is the overall well-being. Now, this overall well-being has to be uh, su suggested by validated scale, like I, I uh, showed in the MIMOP2 scale and already there is a question of for, for well-being. We can use those scales for validating the well-being well score here. And question number six, A and six B is on, the, on the, is, uh, is based on the Herring's law of cure. Okay, what was the direction of cure, whether the symptoms improve in the opposite direction of the development or not, and uh, other, uh, the, the improvement was from top downwards, from organ of more important to less importance, from deeper to superficial aspects. Uh, seventh is that did the old symptoms uh, reappear temporarily or not? And the, uh, the most important question is uh, here's the question number eight. It means are there any alternate cause uh, that had a, that have a very high probability to cause the improvement? Like uh, patients apart from our homeopathic medicines, sometimes come with, uh, they're also on allopathic medication also on, or other Ayush therapies. So that uh, those treatment can also cause some improvement in the patients. And apart from medication, there are other clinically relevant interventions like uh, patient uh, does physiotherapy or yoga. They, that may also brought about some positive change. So we have to assess whether there are any alternate causes or not. If there are uh, other alternate causes, we have to score minus three here. Uh, ninth is, was the health improvement confirmed by objective evidence? Uh, and uh, tenth is, uh, did the repeat dosing conducted get sim similar clinical improvement or not? No, repeat dosing means if he, uh, the patient has not prescribed medicine and he was uh, doing well and uh, kept on placebo after a few months or after a prolonged uh, period. Uh, suppose he, he had again he, he had again a flare up of symptoms and we are prescribing the same medicine. So we have to see whether that, that's that same repetition has caused improvement or not. So this is the modified Naranjo criteria. Uh, 
So these three scales, MIMOP2 scale, ORADL scale, and modified Naranjo scale, the clinicians can use for each and every patient coming to their OPD. These are uh, common to all. And the, these scales are used in, in, the, in the daily practice for, for, for the cases that will strengthen their evidence database. So apart, uh, apart from these scales uh, comes the quality of life. Uh, quality of life is uh, another facet that, is, that the scientists are uh, stressing upon. Uh, it is defined by WHO, uh, WHO as individuals perception of their position in life in the context of the culture and value systems in which they live and in relation to their goals, expectations, standards and concerns. It is a broad ranging concept incorporating it in a complex way, the person's physical health, psychological state, level of independence, social relationship, personal beliefs and their relationship to salient feature of the environment. Uh, some of the very uh, frequently used quality of life scale, I am just uh, giving their names and uh, will describe in brief about them um, because th th those scales are very lengthy so i'm not uh, uh, showing here all the questions here so the the most frequently used is the who quality of life scale uh, first it the who quality of life uh, 100 scale was developed it was uh, by the who quality of life group in this 100 items were selected for inclusion in the field trial version now, there were 24 facets of quality of life and uh, four items in each 24 facets and uh, four items relating to overall quality of life and general health. Risk. So it was a very lengthy questionnaire. So WHO mod converted into, into a brief questionnaire, which uh, contains a total of 26 questions. It is based on four domain structure, physical relations, psychological, social relationship, and environmental. And in addition to these, overall quality of life and general health uh, being general health is facet have also been included. So this is the most commonly used quality of life scale. Uh, that is the Euro quality of life. It was developed by the, by the Euro quality of life group. Uh, there are five dimensions, the mobility, self-care, usual activities, pain, discomfort, and anxiety or depression due to his or her complaints. So uh, this, uh, the, the Euro, uh, this uh, scale has, has three versions. First is the 5D 3L, 5D 5L, and 5D U. Uh, 5D 3L has three levels. All the all the five dimensions has to be uh, uh, scored on the three levels. So 5D 3L was uh, introduced in 1990 by the Euro QL group, and these dimensions are uh, that uh, whether uh, no problem, some problem, or ex extreme problem. Apart from this, uh, a VAS score was also there. It's also there for to, for patient self-related health on vert vertical visual analog scale. And there is a 5D 5L level developed by the EuroQL group in 2009. And these uh, test these five dimensions on the five level, like no problem, slight, slight problem, moderate problem, severe problem, and extreme problem. And uh, third is a 5D for youth. This, this level was uh, introduced again in 2009. And again, there's uh, three levels. The no problem, some problem, and lot, lots of problems. Another quality of, uh, important, uh, very frequently used uh, quality of life instrument is the medical outcome study. As a part of the medical outcome study, research and development group, the RAND developed short form health survey. It is a set of generic, coherent, easily administered quality of life measures. Now, these are available in three, uh, three forms. The first is a medical outcome study, 36 item short form health survey, or uh, commonly known as uh, SF36. The second is the 12 item SF12, and the third is the SF20 item. So these are uh, available on the on the uh, website, which, which is uh, visible on the on the screen. And there is a patient enable, enablement instrument. Uh, now this uh, tests the quality of of consultation. Uh, means uh, it is an established. Uh, it is again a patient reported outcome measure that reflects the quality of appointment with the general practitioner. Now, whenever patient comes to visit a general practitioner. We ask, uh, this is the six item question administered to the patient immediately after a consultation. Whether uh, after the, uh, as a result of your visit to the doctor today, uh, whether you feel you are able to cope with life or not, able to understand your illness, able to cope with your illness, able to keep yourself healthy, confident about your health, or able to help yourself on these four, these four uh, options. So, so these were the uh, quality of life is, uh, instruments. Uh, which uh, which uh, in, in this our practice to strengthen the data, their evidence base. And apart from these uh, quality of life evidence, uh, the uh, Central Council for Research in Homeopathy has, has uh, developed standard treatment guidelines in homeopathy. Uh, two volumes have already been published, volume one and volume two, which covers around 35 diseases. 
and all the guidelines for treatment of these 35 diseases and different uh, scales also the disease specific scales are are available in these in these two standard stgs and the the third volume is under preparation and will soon be very soon it will be it will be released uh, so uh, uh, so i stress upon the like mimop2 scale over ideal scale and the naranjo criteria and some of the quality of life scale uh, apart from the quality of life scales uh, there are many diseases uh, disease specific assessment skills available available on the database uh, some of them uh, i am just uh, for example just for information i am enumerating here like uh, for substance abuse it's assessed uh, for alcohol use its audit scale for depression bex depression inventory and hamilton scale is used for cancer at montan scale is used for psoriasis its pasi vitiligo vasi is frequently used for pain brief pain inventory and magill pain questionnaire is frequently used Uh, and for urolithiasis, it is it is a urolithiasis symptom score developed by CCRA. For diarrhea, also CCRA developed one index score. And uh, for frozen shoulder, it's a quick dash. There are number of uh, disease conditions and uh, a number of uh, disease specific scales available on the database, which uh, and some of the scales are free to use. Some have uh, are protected by copyright, so we have to take care of that. Uh, after the these disease specific scale, uh, since we are living in troubled times, the uh, pandemic is uh, raging. Uh, all over the world so some of the covid 19 specific skills have been developed now these are the data collection collection instruments uh, including surveys for assessing covid 19 related behavior and social science domains now the national institute of health uh, office of behavior and social science research the obssr has compiled this list uh, with assist, uh, assistance from the nai disaster research program Uh, there are around uh, 45 uh, scales uh, 45 uh, covid 19 specific scale uh, available in on this database uh, the link is provided in the, uh, on the screen so, uh, only uh, three to four i have uh, listed here there are around 45 scales available some uh, some of those these scales are already validated and some some are under process of validation it's like obsession with covid 19 scale coronavirus anxiety scale uh, pandemic stress index fear of covid so see, these are some of the scales now by utilizing uh, the scales from from uh, this uh, database available uh, we conducted one study uh, on, an online study all over india uh, this is the, this is the screenshot of their study uh, anxiety obsession and fear from coronavirus in the indian population a web based study using covid 19 specific scale uh, this has been published in the international journal of community medicine and public health uh, the picture is the screenshot i have taken from the pdf my own pdf uh, it's not Uh, it was an online cross-section study conducted in the month of June and July, and uh, a convenient sampling method was used using the Google Form. Uh, the psychological effect uh, was assessed using validated COVID-19 scales like uh, coronavirus anxiety scale, obsession with COVID-19 scale, and fear of COVID-19 scale. Uh, this study uh, recruited around 2,004 participants from 31 states and Indian territories in India. Uh, the overall prevalence of psychological disorder due to covid-19 was uh, 53.3% in this study the prevalence of anxiety was around 3.29% which is in line with the uh, national mental health survey released by the government of india and the prevalence of obsession was 13.47% and fear was 46.9% and around 2.8% of the participants suffered from all the three psychological disorder so uh, this was the uh, main uh, uh, outcome of the study so uh, with with these uh, with uh, this uh, scale and this specific scale we can uh, uh, strengthen our case records and, and and our studies and after and uh, again i will uh, here i will these are some of the reporting guidelines suppose uh, after conducting the study and our research uh, the scientists should want to publish their studies in in, in, the, in the journals so these set of guidelines has to be kept in mind uh, while the uh, while the preparing of our 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 study uh, while preparing our uh, manuscript so these set of guidelines specific to reporting of homeopathy trials it's the red hot guideline or reporting data on homeopathic treatment it is a supplement to consort guidelines consort is consolidated standard of reporting trial and these are the checklist these check this checklist has to be kept in mind while preparing the manuscript I mean, these items has to be incorporated into into our manuscript like uh, rationale for the study the participants the information on medications consultation practitioners co intervention control intervention adverse event 
uh, apart from the reporting trials, uh, one very, very important guideline is the home case guideline for reporting homeopathic case records. Uh, so to overcome the shortcomings of uh, RCTs and lack of its suitability to the homeopathic way of treatment, the home case guidelines have been developed. It is the supplement to care guidelines. And every clinician is encouraged to re uh, record and report their cases as per these guidelines so that uh, eventually a pool of uniform case records can be generated for a large scale evaluation. Uh, it is known that uh, most homeopathic clinicians establish remarkable cures on a daily basis, but they fail to report them for everyone to know. Uh, and uh, uh, what's the reason? The reason is that uh, it's due to lack of interest to sensitization and also uh, due partly due to poor method at object for reporting cases. So it is expected that once the clinicians are sensitized to the use and uh, practicability of home case guidelines, it will, it will eventually improve the homeopathic research database as well as the resulting improved patient care. So this is the these are the checklists. Uh, these checklists has to be kept in mind while presenting our individual case records. Like uh, the title must use the word case record. The keywords should be there. The, the proper abstract should be there. A brief background some of the case. The patient information in detail. The clinical findings. Now the clinical findings must include the clinical homeopathic symptoms which are used for decision, the timeline in the form of table of figure, the diagnostic assessment is uh, how the diagnosis, we, we reach a, a particular diagnosis, what were the challenges, what were the differential diagnosis of the case, what is the prognosis of the case, therapeutic intervention, therapeutic intervention, we have to uh, mention uh, each and everything, the name of the medicine, the galenic form, the manufacturer, the potency, the scale, repetition, strength, duration, everything has to be, has to be uh, mentioned. Now the follow-up and the outcomes, uh, we have to uh, take care to include other objective evidence, if there was any homeopathy aggravation or not, and whether they are, and what's, what's the causal attribution, possible causal attribution of the changes. And for this possible ca causal attribution, that modified Naranjo criteria, which I previously uh, showed here, that, that can be used. Apart from then, we have to discuss the case, the main takeaway, legend, the, uh, main takeaway lessons of the, of the case report, the strength and limitations. And it will be very uh, important if we can use, we can include the patient's perspective in, in, the, in, in our case report. And also, if we, if we are taking, uh, we have taken the informed consent or not, that informed consent is very important while reporting our case. So these are some of the guidelines. Now, uh, these guidelines, uh, all the there are many guidelines for our, uh, for these purpose, which are available on the Equator Network. The, it is enhancing the quality and transparency of transparency of health research. The Equator Network is an international initiative that seeks to improve the reliability and value of published health research literature by promoting transparent and accurate reporting and wider use of robust reporting guidelines. Uh, uh, actually, Equator Network is an umbrella organization. And uh, there are many, it is a coordinated attempt to tackle the problems of inadequate reporting. Uh, and uh, there are many reporting guidelines available on this, uh, on this network, some of uh, like uh, for randomized trial, there are, there are consort guidelines, for observational studies, stroke guidelines are there, for conducting systematic reviews, PRISMA guidelines are there, for preparing of, of uh, study protocol, spirit guidelines are there, care guidelines for case reports, and like, likewise, so many guidelines are there. So after uh, conducting our studies or research and uh, preparation of our manuscript, uh, th then we come to the step of communicating our research. Such as normally communicate their result. By impact factor or by presentation in scientific meetings. Uh, peer review journals uh, are journals uh, in which the articles are vetted by independent referees or for quality and interest and are therefore more highly regarded by the researchers. And the article published in journals that are indexed, uh, indexed by indexing services are retrievable and accessible to other researchers. Uh, thus it ensures that it, it has a wider dissemination to the scientific community. And journals uh, that are ranked by their impact factor. Impact factor is a term used to indicate means uh, to how many times on average the journal paper has been cited. So, uh, so these are some of the journals in homeopathy, Indian Journal of Research in Homeopathy, uh, published by CCRH, Homeopathy, Homeopathy Links, uh, published by the theme publishers, International Journal of High Dilution Research, Complementary Therapies in Medicine, Explore, the Journal of uh, Science and Healing. And there are many other like Journal of Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine, the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine, they are longest. And uh, these are some of the research database, uh, which uh, 
the clinicians and the researchers can uh, can utilize for their for for their knowledge and for different to for different studies. Uh, some are, uh, one of the most important the archives of homeopathy. It is the it is an initiative of CCRH where many important many old uh, available uh, doc, uh, books and uh, journals have been digitized. Uh, we can find uh, those uh, in, in a digital form on, on this website, on this portal. Then there is a Irish research portal. Uh, then there is a Homebrex uh, uh, database. In the Homebrex database, uh, you will find more than around 2,500 experiment on basic homeopathic research. And it's, then there is a core home database. Uh, you can find around more than 1,000 clinical studies on homeopathy. Other most widely used are PubMed, Science Direct, Cochrane, Cirrus, and like that. One is a pro quality database. It's a patient reported outcome and quality of life instrument database. It was created in 2002 by, by Mapa Research Institute, a database with a record of over 900 instruments, the majority of which are survey. So this was a, uh, uh, my, uh, my presentation. But in the end, I would like to state again state that uh, I, I, I have uh, earlier said that there are around uh, 3 lakh registered homeopathic medical practitioners in India. and. Uh, Still, uh, homeopathy is being criticized heavily because of the lack of evidence. Uh, and uh, and if if imagine if a point one percent of the total uh, registered practitioners published in one year, they are one only one successful case. So we are looking to on the data on on a on a, on a database of around three thousand cases per year. So if uh, we can use, we can utilize these uh, uh, these uh, instruments in our our practice, uh, then we can strengthen our case records. Because what happens is whenever the patient comes to to our OPD, uh, at, uh, we do not know how what will be the outcome of the case. Sometimes a very sim very seemingly easier looking case or simple case lingers on for a very long time, and sometimes a very difficult case. Uh, there is a miraculous cure, cure in a very difficult case. So uh, beforehand, we are not sure what will be the outcome, what will what will be the, 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 be the problem, what will the final result in the case. So it is prudent that we use uh, these available instruments in uh, in our OPD on uh, all all the cases, so that uh, we do not miss out any important or any any important important uh, case. So if uh, as again said, if 0.1 percent of the homeopathic medical practitioner registered practitioner in India. Which comes to, to 3,000. If 0.1% of practitioners publish their one successful case in one year, we are looking forward to 3,000 successful treated cases with strong evidence in favor of homeopathy. It will, it will strengthen the homeopathic evidence evidence base. So, with this appeal, and uh, I, I would like to end my session here. I will again like to thank the organizers and Dr. And, uh, my our, uh, Dr. Atesh Khan, my principal of my alma mater. Uh, for giving me an opportunity to present my session in, in this uh, today's webinar. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Please uh, stop your skin sharing. Stop your skin sharing. Okay, 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 okay. Just... Thank you. Uh, we have some question and answer session or panelist discussion at the end of the uh, another speaker, speech of the another speaker. Please wait. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, please wait. Uh, that are, uh, another speaker is Dr. Pavan Sarma. Dr. Pavan Sarma, please open your audio and video. Pavan Sarma. Yes, sir. Hi, okay, okay, fine. Your video, is it? It is not opening now. The speaker, please allow, allow him. You cannot start video because host has stopped it. I am telling you, I am telling you, host is from Chennai. Uh, Dr. Omit, please stay with us because there will be a panel discussion after the end of the Dr. Pavul Sarma. Uh, Rasmika, please. Rasmika. Okay, sir. Uh, Rasmika, please uh, allow Dr. Pavul Sarma. Rasmika, can you hear me? Rasmika. It's it's okay, sir. I can uh, I can say without uh, video. No, no, just wait, just wait. I'm I'm sharing my PPT, sir. Uh, you share your PPT. I'm telling Rasmika. Uh, 
जस्ट वेट पवन जो रश्मि का भी लेला हुआ है आई एम जस्ट कॉलिंग हर इट्स नॉट प्रॉब्लम सर आई कैन आई कैन डिलीवर विदाउट एनी वीडियो सर इट इज ओके जस्ट वेट 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 हेलो जस्मिका हेलो रश्मिका कैन यू हियर मी हेलो Hello Rashmika can you hear me Mm madam mm-hmm. Okay Dr Rashmika जस्ट वेट पवन जस्ट वेट फ्यू मिनिट्स समथिंग रॉन्ग इज गोइंग ऑन एट चेन्नई इन द नेटवर्क इज सुपर बिजी गुड इवनिंग गुड व्हाट हैपेन डॉक्टर रश्मिका इज होस्ट प्रिंसिपल होस्ट डॉक्टर पवन शर्मा इज रेडी बट हिज वीडियो इज नॉट अलाउड फ्रॉम योर साइड थैंक यू मैम जस्ट यू प्लीज लॉग इन एंड रश्मिका इज कनेक्टेड बट इज नॉट गोपला uh audio and video is stopped from her she is not responding ha 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 dr pawan sharma has joined okay pawan hello yes sir i wait just uh, that uh, allowing you mm-hmm. okay there is a network issue at chennai and dr kartik uh, just pawan sharma he is now host dr kartik pawan sharma his host is allowed his video and audio he is already allowed sir i uh, uh, pawan please open your video he is already open pawan sharma you please open your video you have been allowed he is already sharing the screen I'm uh, sharing, but his video. He is telling that host has uh, stopped his video. Okay. There is uh, there is instruction. You cannot start your video because I the host has stopped it. Wait, wait, Pawan. Just I am. I am talking with. One uh, one minute. One minute, sir. Let uh, me take him off. Uh, okay, okay. And then. Stop. Oh, one more. Okay, that was his problem. Where's Pawan? He's not there. Let him. Is he logging on again? 
Oh, Pavel, sir, I have to log log in again. Okay, just just wait. You wait. I'm okay, okay. I'm, oh, he's logged. Come back. He's log, logged in in the attendance list. You please. One minute. Off. I'm just. To add him. Pavel, you now open your audio and video. No, it says he can't be added to a co-host. Oh, yes, yes. Pavel. Pavan? <coughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Open your audio and video and open your audio and video. My audio is open, sir, but uh, you, you, same problem with the video, sir. Dr. Kartik is telling that Post the has problem. stopped it. Dr. Kartik? Hello? Sir, it's not problem. I I I can share. Again, he has left. Again, he has left in the attendance list. Pavan Sharma. Uh, please open your audio and video. Pavan. Sir, kindly proceed without the video. It is not. It is stopped by the host. I am but telling the host. Dr. Kartik is telling. Uh, again, you have been uh, omitted. Huh? I think your name. What is the problem from there? He is from headquarters. He is telling. I am just calling again him. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, okay. Where are you are now? I am now in uh, Delhi, sir. Uh, now you please open your audio and video. What is the problem? <laughs> audio is audio is open, sir, but video is not. Uh, is can I cannot open because uh, 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 this has stopped video. by. Coming up, starting the video. What is the option? Hello. Yes, sir. You please start your program. Okay, sir. You please skin share again. He he share skin. Again he share his skin. Start your program. Okay, sir. Okay. You start your program, Dr. Pavan Sharma, a scientist from Central Council of Research in Homeopathy. Uh, research in homeopathy and uh, he will speak on the topic the case series on otitis media to be published in reputed peer reviewed journal and that pavan sharma actually uh, now at headquarters so he actually is posted at uh, scientist research officer at rri dimapur crh that is from nagaland last you have heard from omit from monipur now you are going to listen uh, with Nagaland, that is uh, uh, with Pravon Sarma, uh, with the topic of otitis media. Pravon, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please start your program, Pravon. First of all, sir, I would like to thank Antar Bharti Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, Nagpur, and Bahola Foundation for Homeopathic Research and Education for giving the opportunity to me for delivering uh, this uh, seminar before you. I would like to thank Professor Dr. Akhilesh Khan, sir, who invited me in this platform. And also, I would like to thank Dr. Amit Srivastava, who uh, 
who has given informative seminar and informative presentation before us regarding evidence generation uh, in homeopathic field. Sir, my topic is a study of 20 cases of otitis media treated with homeopathic medicine, a case series. First of all, I want to say that what is otitis? It is, it is a general term for inflammation or infection of the ear. Otitis media, there is otitis externa, otitis media, and otitis interna. Internal, when there is inflammation in the middle ear, then that is called otitis media. Acute otitis media is defined as presence of inflammation in the middle ear accompanied by rapid onset of signs and symptoms of an ear infection. Otitis media with effusion is a typical not associated with symptoms. It is described occasionally with a feeling of heaviness. It is defined as the presence of non-infectious fluid in the middle ear for more than three months. Whereas COSM, that is chronic separative otitis media is middle ear in inflammation that results in discharge from the ER for more than three months. It may be complication of acute otitis media. Pain is rarely present in this case. Otitis media is diagnosed clinically, considering objective findings and presenting signs and symptoms. We can use diagnostic tool that is pneumatic otoscope, tympanometry, and acoustic reflectometry. In uh, their OPD, we, when we see the patients, we, we see that in uh, patients came with uh, otitis, chronic separative otitis media, they said, sir, kaan behra hai. So, when I ask him, sir, kaan, uh, yeah, uh, aapka kaan, aap, ko kya problem hai? Kaan behra hai? So, kehte hai ki nahi, kaan behra hai. So, there is a very much uh, amusement in the OPD. It is behra hai ya behra hai. Patient came with the otitis media, defective fullness, heaviness, and patient give his symptoms with the fullness and patient is unable to hear with that ear. Homeopathy is most popular treatment among the complementary and alternative medicine therapies south for otitis media. Among them, this study says that prevalence of COSM among rural school going children. There is homeopathic popularity in alternative and complementary medicine that homeopathy can treat most popular treatment. Several studies in homeopathy for ER disorders have positive role. These are studies which have positive role in otitis media. These are studies which shows positive role Otitis media with effusion. Only one study shows otitis media with effusion. Otitis, acute otitis media, there is nine studies in homeopathy which shows very much positive role in homeopathy. Again, otitis media, only otitis media, three studies there is which shows positive effect of homeopathy. There is only one study which shows, which is published as protocol in National Institute of Homeopathy, NIH, only one study protocol which is published till date. No chronic otitis, no study is published in chronic separative otitis media or chronic otitis media. There is one study in tinnitus, use of homeopathy in the treatment of tinnitus, JJ Simpson of et al. 
one study in glue ear a randomized comparison of homeopathic and standard care for treatment of glue ear in the children there is only one study protocol on chronic otitis media no complete study on chronic otitis media is found after such majority of the studies revealed promising role of homeopathic treatment in otitis media this is a study Hello. of jacob jeans homeopathic treatment of acute otitis media in children a preliminary randomized placebo controlled trial this study suggests a positive treatment effect of homeopathy when compared with placebo in acute otitis media this is a study of frey homeopathy in acute otitis media in children treatment effect or spontaneous resolution in this study the conventional antibiotic treatment of aom faces a number of problems including antibiotic resistance homeopathy has been shown to be capable of treating acute otitis media Rosmika, successfully rosmika are you here advantage for homeopathy rosmika can you hear lower me? antibiotic fill rates during watchful waiting fewer and less serious side effects absence of drug drug reactions reduce parenteral sick leave from work these are the advantages for homeopathy when we use homeopathic medicine homeopathic medicine can lower the antibiotic fill rates it fewer and less serious it have fewer and less serious side effects and there is absence of drug drug reactions and it reduced parenteral sick leave from work one study from cage freezy et al this study shows in observational this is an observational study carried out by one homeopathic and four allopathic ent practitioners in treating acute pediatric otitis media the homeopathic single remedies were found to be beneficial in reducing the duration of suffering as well as number of recurrences this is the study done by ccrh a randomized placebo controlled parallel group pilot study of homeopathic versus conventional treatment for acute otitis media was conducted in jaipur india by ccrh where individualized homeopathy is an effective conventional treatment there were no significant difference between group in the main outcome symptomatic improvement was quicker in the homeopathic group and there was a large difference in antibiotic requirements favoring homeopathy use of antibiotics early in an episode of acute otitis media may impair the natural immune response and weakens the protection against further episodes as suggested in studies of bacterial pharyngitis program hai bas 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 the present study comprises the my study our study pro- comprises the role of homeopathic prescribing in the treatment of otitis media it is a case series of 20 cases of otitis media which is unicentric retrospective observational study data were collected after consecutive homeopathic appointments of patients visiting one opd of rri guwahati during 12 during the 12 months january 2019 to january 2020 individualized homeopathic prescriptions were selected for the otitis cases and prescribed prescription was changed subsequently as per the principle of homeopathy individualized homeopathic medicines were administered according to rule of homeopathy along with special care to the posology and repetition selected medicines were dispensed in 30 ml distilled water with few drops of rectified spirit dose as required and directed to take in empty stomach in the meantime the patients are administered placebo when they were improving the cases were followed up at an interval of 
about a week or as per need of the case. In this study, outcome related to impact on daily living, that is Oridel. What Dr. Amit Sivastava said just before, just, uh, before this um, presentation, he presented well enough about the evidence, how we can uh, generate evidence in our OPD. And for that, he presented so many scales. Among them, Oridal scale is also one scale which was used in my study to assess the patient's well-being. The outcome scored recorded as last follow-up appointment per case was thus the single valued analyzed. This was the study material and method. Case one, in case one, three years male patient having OPD registration number this and patient was suffered since one month with right sided ear complaint com continued from last month. Discharge offensive, salivation, thirsty tongue, moist with imprint of teeth. The medicine was indicated, Marxol and Marxol 200 was given, TDS for one day. No follow-up, patient dropped out. Case two, where five years female case with late years pain, from one, one day, Redis VA found on inspection of late via throbbing pain. Belladonna was given for two days, thrice daily. No follow-up. This patient also dropped out. This is the case number three, third case, where 20 years age, aged female of religion Hindu visited the OPD with Six months having discharge from left ear, white is in color with pain, no offensiveness. Thirst is less with dry tongue. Patient, we give, we gave Calimu 200 as first prescription, twice daily for three days with placebo. Patient has got improved, but has a relapsing tendency, especially in winter, but from less problem did not reappear. C is in, stat in the status improved without recurrence. And the original score was, was plus three. A female, 30 years old, suffering from acute otitis media, right-sided pain uh, with tremendous pain, aggravation in closed warm room from last seven days. Pulsatilla was prescribed on the basis of the symptom and Hello. Patient did not return. On telephonic inquiry, it was found that problem aggravates she took allopathic treatment with almost no relief. And the original score was minus two. And the case had not improved and or sent. SI, 35 years, male, visited OPD, suffering from a month after a spell of cough, Throat infection, he had yellowish discharge from right ear, painless but itching, aggravation in the evening without thirst. Patient was mentally tough, revengeful with desire for sweets and ghee, odorous perspiration. Kalisal 30 was prescribed for three days. Gradual improvement with one within one month after taking medicine. His status after treatment was cured and he had Oridal score plus four after treatment. This is case number six. Patient had thick yellowish, very offensive discharge. Appetite, thirst, and urine was normal. Stool constipated. Marxol 30 was given with relief of symptom after one month. Prescribed patient potency 200 of the same medicine. Symptoms. Yes, sir. Uh, please open your video now. It is okay. Okay, open, sir, okay. Open your video. So, as a network issue, and therefore your video was suddenly off. Can you please open your video? Okay, okay, okay. 
ओके नाउ नाउ ओके फाइन 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 अगेन क्या हुआ व्हाट प्रॉब्लम हां ओके 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 यू प्लीज ओपन योर स्क्रीन शेयरिंग स्क्रीन शेयरिंग इज रिमूव यस सर यस सर यस सर यस आई हैव री शेयर योर स्क्रीन ओके ओके नाउ इट इज यस सर नाउ इट इज ओके This is symptoms relapsed again, and same patient, same medicine was repeated. Patient did not return, and our effort to collect information through phone also failed, and original score was zero. This is a case, very much interesting case. What Dr. Amit Srivastava said that some simple case lingered in our OPD, which seems to seem simple, but some difficult case which seems difficult cured very much early this is a case which was looks like very simple case but when medicine prescribed the case case was very much lingered for cure this is a case where patient 8 years complaining of cosm yellow greenish offensive discharge through right ear desire for sweet and meat pes maxol 30 was given on review came with no discharge hence prescribed placebo discharge reappeared again given maxol 200 again repaired after a pause of 2 months maxol 200 again give, given but no relief on august 2019 he was given kalisal With almost same condition, again Maxol 200 was given. Then he was prescribed Heparsal 30. With another complaint, patient came with hangnail, painful hangnail. Again given Calisal 30 on 11th number and 11th number with little improvement. Thereafter Calisal 200 was given on 15th number with almost no relief then on 29th november he received silesia he was little bit better he had received silesia 200 on 28th december also and last reported on 28th january he was doing better the oridel scale was 4 and when patient was become stand still after getting silesia improving very much rapidly this is a case patient presented with pain and discharge from left ear watery and offensive after taking medicine for 15 days he is not having considerable improvement he had given max dulcis 30 in distilled water for another 3 days with placebo for 12 days oridel score was 0 and patient did not report further could not be contacted and finally drop out this is a case was suffering from last 5 days she was diagnosed patient of sle in our opd presented with right ear right sided ear discharge with excessive salivation and imprint of teeth on tongue simultaneously having right sided pleurisy prescribed maxol 30 in distilled water for 3 days on next visit 1st july 2019 patient was better no discharge but slightly discharge there so maxol 200 was prescribed in the same manner and finally she was cured her cosm oridel score was plus 4 This is a case of 16 years female having OPD registration, <coughs> and she was suffering from pain in right ear with discharge, watery since seven days, very cross and irritable. Camomilla 200 was given, no follow up, dropped out the case. This is a case where discharge bilateral of ear. from 3 months with pain and hearing diminished with the symptoms maxol 30 was given advised to take one tablespoon twice daily 
patient improved and the patient was cured polydel score was plus 4 this is a case where discharge through right ear yolo is with pain no pain since one month tongue salivated here mark dalsis 30 was given patient did not come further but on telephonic query it was found that patient is much better only there is moistening while cleaning the ear the oridal scale was plus 2 his final status is improved 3 months old female child 7 days discharge from right ear white is in color and bland this white color and bland discharge indicates calimur and calimur's 30 was given one globule in one spoon of breast milk tds for two days no further further follow up hence patient is dropped out there is another case patient was suffering from painless and yellowish discharge from both ears since six days on the basis of objective symptom of discharge yellowish discharge kali salf was given in distilled water with this medicine all of his sign symptoms were gone and he got get completely cure his oridal score after treatment is plus 4 this is a case who is visited our opd on 16 november was suffering from acute otitis media since last 3 days complaining of having right sided ear discharge with pain itching from 3 days tongue clean with imprint of teeth marks all 30 was given according to the symptom and patient becomes better with medication but pain reappeared from last 2 days of second visit itching also much increased same medicine was repeated in the same week follow up due on telephonic conversation it was found that patient is better with only scanty discharge no pain no itching persists now oridal score is plus 3 problem recurred after one month and after that when medicine was repeated patient was devoid of most of symptoms her status is cured a 4 years of age female uh, uh, child suffering from cosm from last one year she had pain discharge through right ear tongue moistened with red tip prescribed belladonna 200 thrice daily for two days no improvement with night aggravation and aggravation specially on bed marxol 200 was prescribed telephonic inquiry reveals that child had improved and no pain but ear little wet and asked to report the opd at that time oridal score was plus 3 this is a case of 51 year female suffering from one month she had appeared with yellowish greenish discharge through both ears thus diminished with discomfort in closed room had been prescribed pulsatilla 30 better in the next visit that is on 15th october and prescribed placebo for another 15 days markedly improved and her oridal scale score was plus 3 this is another case patient came with discharge from both ear with pain following an attack of common common cold she was suffering from last 10 days marxol 30 was prescribed on acute totality twice daily for 3 days followed by rubrum for 15 days on next visit pain and discharge was much less and asked to visit after 7 days with placebo with standard condition of symptoms marxol 200 was prescribed in the same manner as earlier asked to report after one month on telephonic conversation patient said that he had improved and score was plus 4 this is another case patient suffering from discharge from left ear without pain watery faintly yellowish since 7 days given kali salf 
twice daily for three days. Patient did not come further, but telephonic conversation with her reveals that she had gradual improvement and was better on 19th November. Original score was plus three. This is last case where patient was suffering from pain with white cream-like discharge from left ear from four months. Thirstlessness, Calisal 30 was prescribed thrice daily for two days. Pain aggravated without any sort of relief, did not come for follow-up, hence having insufficient follow-up and no on telephonic conversation and his ordinal score is minus two. This is 20 cases we I have described individually. Now in these 20 cases, I what I observed, 10 cases are from male side and 10 cases from female side. And there was maximum number of patients belong to the year age group, that is 11 years to 20 years age group, four cases, that is 20% of all 20 cases, and three cases from the age group of one year, age group from one to 10 year, and age group from 30 to 40 years. If you see the uh, table presented in this, presentation or slide, C, maximum patient came from age group 11 to 20 years, which is four. And minimum patient which is came, which came from, came in our OPD, that is number two case, 10% case, lowest frequency age group in the category of 20 years to 30 years age group, and 40, year, 40 to 50 years of age group. If we see duration of illness, in 20 cases, patients came with minimum duration of illness one day. And maximum duration of illness is five days. Now, in minimum duration of one day, case is one, and in maximum duration of one day, that uh, uh, duration of illness is five years, case is one. The cases of duration of illness, one day, five day duration, six day duration, 10 day duration, three months duration, four months duration of illness, and six months duration of illness, eight months of duration of illness, one year of duration of illness, and five year of duration of illness, each, in each duration of illness in this case, cases was one, that is 5%. And whereas duration of three days duration, only two cases, that is 10%. And most of the patients suffering from seven days duration of illness were three. And cases suffering from a month with otitis media were maximum that is five. Maximum number of cases came in our OPD seeking homeopathic treatment after three days. If we see the um, this duration of illness, patient never come before three days. Patient came after three days in our OPD. There was an opportunity to follow up of 16 patients and four patients were dropped out after first prescription. Among these 16 follow-ups, follow there was a positive outcome in 12, negative in two, and no change in two cases, whereas four cases were dropped out. This is the um, figure where two cases were status quo, 12 improved case, two worse case, and four cases with no follow-up, that is dropped out. Among 16 out of 20 cases, score of cure, that is back to normal, that is five case. Major improvement, that is in five case. Moderate improvement in one case. Slight improvement in one case. No change, that is unsure, in one two case. 
slight deterioration, no effect on daily living, that is, no cases was found. Moderate deterioration found in two cases, major de deterioration and disastrous deterioration found in no cases, no follow-up in four cases, that is, dropout cases. These are the medicines which were prescribed already in an, a, a 20 cases as des described there. Belladonna in one case, chamomilla in one case, cal calimure in two case, cali salve in four case, margalsis in two case, marxol, maximum cases, seven cases were prescribed marxol, two cases prescribed pulsatilla and silesia in one case. Marxol prescribed in seven case, one case was dropped out and one case remained the same with unchanged. Among remaining five cases, three cases were cured and two cases were showed major, major improvement. Calimur prescribed in two cases with major improvement in one occasion. In another occasion, case was dropped out. Whereas in Calisalve cases, four cases with cured back to normal in two cases and major improvement in one case and moderate deterioration, no effect on daily living in one case. Markdalsis, two cases where one case remain the same with no change or unsure and the other case was moderate improvement affecting daily living. Pulsatilla prescribed in two cases where one showed major improvement, the other one case showed moderate deterioration with no effect on daily living. Silesia, one case with slight improvement, no effect on daily living. Belladonna and Camomilla, one case in each with no follow-up. This is the um, figure which showed the improvement in oral scale. If we see, the 20 case with prescription of Maxwell, Belladonna, Calimur, Pulsatilla, Calisalf, Maxwell, Silesia, where there is improvement source, that is, carb goes upwards, and where there is deterioration, the carb goes downwards. The prescribed medicine frequency of symptoms. Maxwell, we read in textbook of Metrimedica, there are several symptoms of Maxwell. But when you have to prescribe in OPD, you cannot get whole symptom in a patient. In which symptoms you have to prescribe, that symptoms are maybe very few, intensified symptoms, characteristic symptoms, keynote symptoms. So when seven in seven cases prescription was done, the frequency of symptoms are different. My, same marks all was prescribed in different cases with different frequency of symptoms. As I gave in the presentation, in this presentation, the imprint of teeth on tongue, I have seen in two cases. Salivation in three cases, offensiveness of discharge in three cases, thirst is predominant, prominent in two cases. Most of cases are right-sided in Marxol, that is in four cases among um, three cases. One case having desire for meat and one case was reported to have the night aggravation. This is the frequency of symptoms of Maxwell cases. In Calimur case, there was two cases where I prescribed Calimur and there was blunt discharge in one case, white color of discharge in both cases, want of thirst in one case, dry tongue in one case, one case with right-sided affection and one case with left-sided affection. The belladonna which case was dropped out and that case was prescribed on the basis of redness of affected area and throbbing sensation. Silesia prescribed in one case. Remember that case was so lingered by after prescription of Maxol and after that prescribed Calisal, after that prescribed for uh, the uh, hangnail, hepar salve, and after that again, uh, Kali salve was prescribed, and at last, when prescription was based on offensiveness, chronicity, 
tubercular family history and recurrent periodicity, periodical supportive middle year. These symptoms when uh, collected and silicia was prescribed, patient cured. After calisalp, uh, we, we, I prescribed in calisalp in four cases with yellow thick discharge in three cases, white discharge in one case, thirstlessness in two cases, and evening aggravation in one case. This is, this is the frequency of symptoms in calisalp. Mark Ralsi is prescribed in two cases. The symptoms I got, offensive discharges in both cases with salivated tongue prominently in one case. Here one case was right-sided and the other was left-sided. One is painful and other was painless. Chamomilla, which was dropped out case, patient was prescribed on the basis of irritable nature of the patient and patient was dropped out. Pulsatilla, there was two, two cases which were, which were prescribed pulsatilla on the basis of yellowish greenish discharge in both cases with diminished thirst in one patient, closed room aggravation in both cases, patient who have got all the symptoms right had improved where as the other cases become worse. This is, the, this is not a symptom of pulsatilla. This is the overall uh, observation in 20 cases. Patients who got all the symptoms right and had improved and where there is no uh, uh, typical symptoms or characteristic symptom or, or the deficiency of collection of symptom from my side or deficiency of given uh, symptoms given by the patient, there was worsening of the case. When duration of illness was analyzed, it was found that Cases with complaints of short duration improve early, whereas with the long duration of illness take much time to recover or remain status quo. If we see this um, uh, uh, graph, there is uh, duration of illness and the improvement of the cases. In if there, if there is, if there is, I if we see the last uh, case. That is case number six uh, pre presented in this uh, uh, graph that the duration of illness is five years and the outcome is negative. The graph, red graph, is shows the negative improvement. <coughs> so we can say that the patient came with early with their symptoms, with their complaint, with their illness, we can treat them well there are so many reasons. First reason, patient came early and they can give the symptoms accurately. They can give symptoms which are intense symptoms, which are characteristic of that case. So we can treat the case accordingly. But when a patient came with long duration complaint, <coughs> in that case, patient can take very much different type of allopathic medicines and different type of suppression <clears throat> it it may be it may be um, chronic uh, sorry natural suppression it may be artificial suppression so actual symptoms cannot get from that patients so in this case improvement was inversely proportionate in relation to duration of illness, increasing duration of illness, improvement declining, which is in the line of Dr. Hanneman's observation as mentioned in organ of medicine. The study reflected the importance of homeopathic prescribing in the treatment of botitis media following strict homeopathic principle. It reveals that in our study, outcome did not depend upon the age, but on medicine. What we, we seen, we have seen that if patient is younger, in that case, patient is uh, improved early. But in our study, in, in our case, the outcome is did not depend upon the age, but on the medicine. What kind of medicine and what kind of duration, in which, you know, what duration patient was suffered. And on, upon that 
the improvement was depend depended and correctly chooses remedy with strict homeopathic principle shows maximum improvement study on chronic otitis media with homeopathic intervention may be taken in large scale in future which is t- till date unexplored there are so many study in acute otitis media but very few study in chronic otitis media proper homeopathic intervention with uh, we can we can take a, we have, we can take um, study on chronic otitis media with homeopathic inter- intervention in large scale in future and that can be evidence based medicine which can be added in our research this paper was accepted in homeopathic links published by time and it will be published soon and these are the references thank you i again wants to thank uh, the antar bharati homeopathic medical college and bahula research uh, research uh, foundation and also i would like to thank professor dr akhilesh khan who invited me for present this uh, seminar thank you sir thank you thank you please uh, pavan please stop your skin sharing stop your skin sharing okay sir okay <clears throat> dr omit sivastha please open your omit sivastha please open your video and audio dr yes, prasan barbat prasan barbat prasan barbat sir please open your audio and video so video is disabled by i uh, just i am asking rashmika Kartik is there. Rosmika left. Kartik, can you hear me? Kartik, Tata Kartik. Tata Kartik, Rosmika is left. Rosmika, there is a network problem. She is telling network, severe network problem out there. Pavan, open your audio and video. What happened with Pavan? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Hi, you okay? Okay. Host okay. is uh, from Chennai. Our network is very poor over there. Uh, in a question answer session, and I am also simultaneously watching the I Lab page homeopathy. Uh, no such questions, major questions have come from their side. So many people have observed. Uh, one one from China, Julie Song has observed this video uh, through Facebook. Uh, she is telling that he could not connect to this uh, uh, link with the webinar. She has also observed from China uh, at the Taiwan nearby Taiwan, and and so many people joined. And only one question from Omit Sivastha. One question for Omit Sivastha. Yes, sir. Omit, can you hear me? Yes, uh, sir. The, uh, uh, because the pain. Sensation is a very important criteria for us for selecting the any remedy. The sensations, the pain is a sensation, I think, mm-hmm. uh, because of the sensory uh, nerves are affected. So into that, the different types of sensations are coming out, and according to that, the sensations. Uh, uh, um, according to that, what happened? Uh, We select the remedies. Whatever is the headache, whether there is any pain, so that can be described uh, by senses, sensation, uh, and according to that, we select the remedy. So one question is: Is the McGill pain questionnaire, McGill pain questionnaire, brief pain inventory, how will correlate with the sensations as described by? Uh, so many authors in Metro America, as if sensation, as you know, the very good book. Uh, we took the, we take the help of that particular book. So how will correlate with the sensations? So the magical sensations, the uh, pain questionnaires, along with the brief pain, how it will help us? This is a question. Omi, please uh, just uh, please give uh, reply. Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, the 
the brief pain inventory and the Maggill pain questionnaire are the two most uh, frequently used uh, questionnaire for uh, uh, recording the pain intensity and pain effect. Uh, since because uh, uh, in our study, in any of the study, we still have not used these two questionnaires. So I'm not in the perfect position to, uh, to answer that. But uh, uh, we are uh, working on one study. The CCRH is working on a study to which, which we are going to implement in the infar on, on sports medicine where uh, we are planning to use these uh, the brief pain inventory and uh, one of the scales out of these two so uh, and uh, sensation uh, like uh, uh, i have told that uh, was scale uh, the was scale can be modified like the pain intensity i have, I have uh, said that it, it is used for pain intensity and another was scale, another was can be used for the pain effect what is the effect overall effect uh, it is causing on on on, on the individual cell so the VAS can be modified into pain intensity and pain effect. And uh, yeah, I, I apologize because I have not used these two questionnaires in any of the studies. So I am not very much familiar with these two scales. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Any, any, other, any, other, any other reply from your side on that point? Any other, any other reply? Any other information? Uh, no, sir, but uh, like that, ke, uh, our CCR is, pl is planning to undertake one study on sports medicine, uh, okay, and it will be the one of the first we'll study of its kind. Yeah, yeah. And that, in that study, we are planning to use the, these uh, one of the these, these two scales. So after that, uh, I will be in a better position to comment on this after okay, experiencing. Okay. So try to try to correlate to the homeopathy. Yeah. The yes. Interpretation yeah. should be homeopathy. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Thank you, Doctor uh, Omit, uh, for uh, your presentation. Uh, wait, and Dr. Pavan, and and most of the cases you have taken with the Maxwell and others. Uh, seven and cases were from Maxwell. Uh, seven, seven cases, cases from Maxwell. Uh, uh, Among 20 and cases, seven cases were given. Uh, in respect of you, uh, no question, just no, not yet come in the chat yes, box sir. as well as the Facebook. Uh, yes, sir. But so many people already, uh, already viewed uh, both yes, the sir. programs through Facebook. Yes. I love the homeopathy. Yes, because sir. I know the app page homeopathy consisting of more than 250,000 members. Uh, yes, in sir. a few yes, minutes, sir. the viewers should be more. Uh, how many people are attached to this lab page homeopathy? So many, and the questions should come in future. And then I will yes, forward sir. the questions to you in the question in the variable. But the chat, no question is come. Uh, my question is that, my question is that why you are telling that cure, that cure after giving the muscle 30, or Maxwell 200, the case is cured. Mm -hmm. uh, sir. How you declare? How you declare giving one or two potency when there is a question of chronic disease, there is a question of sir. recurrency. Uh, how declared with the antimyosinophytic treatment by simply on the yes, uh, just simply on that point. Sir, this, is, this, this this term this term cure is on based on the scale or idle. That uh, is outcome related to impact on daily living. There is where there is orbital scale containing the plus four mark, then that is called cure or back to the normal. My cure question is or here. Back my, to the... my question is here. Uh, does this yes, orbital scale will fulfill the uh, the permanent cure as for the aphorism number two? The, no, sir. We uh, are, we, uh, we 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 are doing the research according to this. Uh, scale well, um, and my, my presentation what i we will present hmm. that will corroborate with the allopathic system of medicine who, okay. as whole scientific world can understand this term according to this original scale this hmm. is uh, um, the uh, term cure which is which means back to the normal and it is not in our path, which is called complete restoration of the health. It is not complete restoration of the health. It is back to the normal. So uh, we are using this scale. You can say there is the restoration and yes, the temporary alleviation of the symptom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alleviation of the symptom. But elevation. Cure. Back thank to the you, normal. Thank that you, is Dr. Yes, Pavon. Thank you, Dr. Yes, Pavon, for your presentation. Yes, Yes, uh, most promising speaker, both are most promising speaker. They are very good students at the student life. I know them personally. Uh, both of them uh, did their uh, post graduation from my college or I know the administration. And yes, two students now. Thank you, uh, we have heard uh, Dr. Pavan Sarma 
uh, from Nagaland and northeast corner is just covered uh, because <laughs> one day Boydurjo came to uh, part. Uh, so northeast part is covered. Now the remaining south part and central part is uh, remaining uh, and they will come in December and uh, some part on the 28th some people will come. So many people have joined with us. I respect that a Biswajyoti Chatterjee principal of Asansol Homeopathy Medical College joined with us. Thank you, sir, for joining and listening our lecture, Dr. Biswajyoti Chatterjee from Calcutta, uh, from Asansol. Uh, so many people, Renuvala uh, from Renuvala, uh, uh, she did MD from NIH, I think. Uh, she joined, uh, Jayatri Pradhan, Obisek Saha at NIH now, joined from there. Gurudev Chobe, thank you, Gurudev. Your session is coming. Wait for you, Gurudev uh, Chobe from Siliguri joined with us. So many people have joined and with us. Our students have joined, our teachers have joined. Dr. Barbak sir, I think uh, uh, Rosmika has left the network problem. So validatory session should be completed by me. Also, there is no way out because of the Rosmika and Kartik has just their network issue. They have left. So I have to complete. All right. Uh, uh, I, I'm listening. I'm here, doctor. Okay, okay. please. Uh, uh, I think open your audio, uh, video, and uh, uh, Prasant Barbat sir, may add to Yes, doctor. Uh, Prasant, uh, Prasant Barbat sir, add to uh, As a host, Prasant Barbat sir, open your audio and video. Uh, uh, Dr. Kartik is a CEO of the uh, Bahula Foundation and Research. Uh, uh, he's from Chennai. Bahula Foundation Research in Homeopathy, Bahula Laboratory is 80 years old laboratory in the country, doing well with the homeopathy in the south part of the country, uh, the Bahula Foundation. And we have an announcement on 28th, we're going uh, with the other two type scientists of CCRH and popularly uh, Madam Dr. Bindu Sarma is coming with us on 28th of this month. And we will upload the link and everything. Make it safe, but the poster will upload in uh, within short time. And uh, Dr. Barbat sir, please open your. Barbat sir, can you hear us? Barbat yes, sir. sir, I can hear you, but uh, the video is not. Uh, that is disabled. Uh, video, I'm telling Dr. Kathik sir, video, please allow video. Uh, Barbat sir is another organizer. He is a superintendent of the hospital. You can open uh... now. Open, 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 open. Yes, sir. Ah, now open, open. So thank you. So this is the announcement what I'm telling my viewers and these uh, uh, two scientists of CCRH, please stay with us, be with us. In your future, we'll call, uh, ask you again to with another topic because the CEO of the Bahula always extends his hands by providing the platform, beautiful platform with I love page homeopathy. I think it is the most popular uh, page in homeopathy, a live page, more than two lakh members are there. They are viewing all the program. So many people are viewing this program because online is going on. And also announcement that we are planning already. We have decided to go through our another program in uh, 20, 2021. Uh, 2021, a beautiful um, year for the human generation. So 2021 will be the very beautiful world. Uh, with a new uh, dawn, new sun with homeopathy, I think with the homeopathy, uh, because of that the entire civilization suffering from the pandemic, and that will be uh, less in this 20 with this hope. And I request Dr. Barbat sir, Barbat sir, to go to yes, the validatory session, vote of thanks. Uh, Barbat sir is the uh, professor of Metre Medica of Antarbharati Homeopathy Medical College and Hospital. Is a superintendent of the hospital, uh, Prasant Barbat. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So open your uh, open, please. Uh -huh. To the speakers, Dr. Pawan Sharma and Dr. Amish Srivastu, sir, um, that uh, you are delivering a, a nice uh, lecture for our students. And these guidelines are uh, good for a newcomers, those who are. Uh, in turn or their students uh, is it for them it is a good information and even for the practitioners but nowadays what happens that the practitioner they will never follow the guidelines of CCRH they will just do their practice they are not able to 
put their uh, evidence uh, in front of uh, uh, any in the form of scientific paper uh, so thank you dr pavan sharma sir and dr amit shrivastava sir for your the valuable lecture and you are giving a time for us and dr khan sir as he is a organizer and he and dr kartik who is providing us a platform for to arrange this webinar so thank you very much and thank you thank you thank you thank you amit thank you pavan thank you pavan pavan thik ache in bengali হ্যাঁ বেঙ্গলি ঠিক ঠিক আছে স্যার থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার একটা বিউটিফুল পিকচার ছিল পিছনে একটা বিউটিফুল পিকচার ওরে এটা ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ডে লাগানো ছিল পরে দেখেছি হ্যাঁ বিউটিফুল বিউটিফুল পিকচার হ্যাঁ 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 ম্যাডাম ঠিক আছে হ্যাঁ স্যার ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে ভেরি গুড আই 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 হ্যাভ হাস্ট হার টু আই হ্যাভ হ্যাড টু জয়েন টু হোয়াটসঅ্যাপ আই উইল ইনভাইট হিম উইল ইনভাইট হার and uh, both the secretary and uh, she is sitting in front of me uh, <laughs> she is <she's> listening <laughs> yes uh, we will we'll, 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 we'll invite them both of them secretary and and assistant secretary uh, in our program okay program sir is already inaugurated by dg iu uh, dg ccrh and another educational program coming out with the bahola foundation research and for encouraging our students i think uh, madam is listening my lecture and, and that will yes, be our online online search of talent search online talent search for the students to the all the students of the india i will invite them and as a speaker and to promote the speaker online this is a very good opportunity for us and, and that we can invite all the students put the picture we will 